Okay, magandang araw at welcome sa ating webinar uh, tungkol sa Google for Education Tools. Para sa araw nito, pag-uusapan natin ay ang Google Calendar, isa sa mga Google for Education Tools para tulungan kayong mag-organize ng inyong events, reminders, at tasks. Lalo na siguro sa panahon na to na napakadami natin kailangang isipin at gawin, uh, mahalaga na na-organize natin ang ating mga tasks um, in one space. At ang Google Calendar ay isang powerful tool para matulungan kayong i-organize ang mga tasks and events ninyo. At para simulan, uh, ito ang ating mga gagawin para sa um, webinar na ito. Locating Google Calendar, creating events in Calendar, creating and subscribing to Calendars, sharing Calendars, setting notifications, uh, using Calendar in class. Of course, napakahalaga na alamin natin kung paano nga ba makakatulong ang isang uh, technology or um, application para sa ating pagtuturo. At para simulan, ay pumunta tayo sa um, Google Calendar. Okay. So, meron dalawang access point ang Google Calendar natin. Maaari tayong pumunta sa directly to the page. Uh, I-search lamang sa inyong Google search, Google Calendar, or uh, sa inyong Omnibox, uh, i-type ang calendar.google.com at pupunta na kayo sa inyong Google Calendar. Mag-sign in lamang gamit ang inyong Gmail um, kung saan nakalink ang inyong Google Calendar. Ang isa pang access point um, para sa um, Google Calendar ay uh, via your Gmail. Okay. Um, dahil nga siya, ang, is, ang Google Calendar ay isa din sa mga uh, seamlessly integrated tool uh, uh, ng Google um, uh, for Education Tools. Uh, maaari rin ma-access ang Google Calendar gamit ang iba pang uh, Google for Education Tools tulad ng Gmail. So kapag binuksan natin ang ating Gmail, makikita natin sa right side panel ang ating Google Calendar. Okay, meron yung icon na makikita sa upper right corner. Okay. Uh, yan. Okay. So pag clinic mo yan, ipapakita nito sa iyo ang summary ng events mo, uh, tasks or reminders um, for the month. Okay. Uh, mula din dito sa um, access point na ito uh, ng iyong Google Calendar ay makaka-create ka na ng event. So sa lower right, okay, makita mo yung plus, create an event. So from there, you can already create an event uh, into your calendar or add an event into your calendar. Ngunit para sa webinar na ito, para mas ma-explore natin ang uh, functions and uh, settings ng Google Calendar, ay i-open natin to sa... Um, page ng Google Calendar. Okay, so para gawin yan, sa upper right corner, i-click lamang ang Open in New Tab. So pag clinic mo yan, ay dadaling ka nito sa inyong Google Calendar. Ngayon, um, wala namang pinagkaiba masyado uh, to your usual uh, calendar. You, you still have your dates, your months, uh, and all other um, um, visuals of a calendar. Uh, maaari mong palitan ang iyong um, view mode. So, maaari kang by month, okay? or by day, uh, by week, or by, by year. Pwede by schedule um, of your scheduled events, or every four days. Um, why? Uh, para lang mas madali mong ma-organize or makita yung mga events mo. But for me personally, I prefer na naka-month yung view mode ko. Okay. Now, uh, your current day is always marked as blue para mas madali mo siya makita. Now, to create an event, um, meron kang dalawang option on to create an event, on how to create an event. Um, so, una, sa left, upper left corner, okay, makita mo ang create button. Okay. Okay. So, pag clinic mo yan, okay, uh, magkakaroon ng pop-up window kung saan uh, mag-create ka ng details ng event mo. Okay? Maaari din na mag-click ka ng isang date, particular date, kung saan mo gustong gawin yung event na yun. For example, uh, gagawa tayo ng event sa June 18. So, i-click lamang ang date na yun at automatically magkakaroon ka ng uh, pop-up window um, kung saan mo ilalagay ang detalye. So, maaring dito mo nagawin yung detalye mo, ilagay ang pangalan at iba pang mga detalye. But, uh, for our sake, um, 
um, puntahan natin yung more options kung saan mas makakustomize natin yung event natin. Ngayon, um, so una natin gawin ay pangalan ng ating event. Okay, so title. So for example, it's a, a meeting. Uh, maaari mo iset ang iyong event as an all-day event. Okay, so maaari mo i-click ang all-day uh, event na yan uh, para sabihin na it's an all-day event. So it's full day, wala siyang time limit. Um, kung gusto mo naman na merong uh, time frame, okay, i-unclick mo lamang yan. Okay? At uh, lalabas na yung option to put uh, a time. So, for example, baguhin natin ito. Gawin natin 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So, it's a one-hour meeting. Um, maari mo rin um, iset kung ito ba ay repeating event. Okay? So, for example, kung ito ay isang meeting na usually happens every day. So, maari mo siyang iset on a daily basis. Or it's a meeting that happens every Thursday. Um, or every third Thursday, or annually every June 18, or every weekday, maari mo yung iset. Okay, pero dahil ito ay isolated meeting naman, for example, pwede mo siyang iset as does not repeat. Okay. Uh, isa pa sa mga gandang karagdagan sa Google Calendar ay kapag nag-set ka ng event, ay maari ka nang gumawa ng isang Google Meet link. Okay, so pwede mo yung i-click lamang ang Add Google Meet Video Conferencing at mag-generate ng Google Meet link uh, si Google uh, para sa iyong meeting. Okay. At um, kapag natanggap ng mga guests mo ang email tungkol sa event na to, um, they will also receive the Google Meet link kung saan pwede, kang, pwede silang sumali at mag-video uh, mag conferencing. Pero pakitandaan na meron kang uh, 100 participants limit para sa uh, every conference na gagawin mo. Maaaring mo rin iset ang uh, location okay? and um, notifications. Okay? So, tanggalin muna natin ito okay? uh, para mamakita nyo na pwede kayong mag-add. So, sa so notifications, ito ay notifications uh, para sa iyo at sa mga guests mo um, to notify them and remind them about um, their uh, the event that you set up, set up for all of you. So, for example, yung una nating option is uh, notification. Okay, so, they will be notified 30 minutes before the event. Pwede mo yung baguhin, pwede yung hours, days, um, weeks, or um, hours. Okay, for, for this one, it's uh, 30 minutes. Pwede ka mag-add ng notification pa. Okay, um, so pwede mo iset yan as an email. Okay, um, set na lang sa email. Okay, that they will be notified. Now, let's just put one day. So, big sabihin, all your participants, including you, will receive an email one day before the event. Do you want more notifications? You can add more uh, notifications here. Um, you want more emails to be sent to them? Just like, for example, like um, two hours before the meeting. Uh, but of course, I do not suggest that uh, it will uh, bombard your participants. Okay? You can also delegate a particular event to a particular calendar. So you just click here. For example, I'm delegating it to definitely my personal calendar. You'll we'll see that later uh, as we explore the different calendars that we have and subscribing to different calendars. You can also change um, your colors okay, um, for that particular event. Okay. Uh, I like um, changing colors of events according to the type of event uh, to organize my events. Okay, so I have, for example, a color for work, which is yellow. So, for example, let's set that as yellow. Um, I also have a color for um, personal work, okay, or uh, team works, okay. Um, so that whenever I see my calendar, okay, I would automatically see that there are events for my work and there are events for my personal um, life um, or works uh, within my team, etc. Okay, so it would be helpful if you can like um, delegate a particular color to a particular event, type of event. Okay. Now, another option that you can put into your event is to add description. Okay, so you can like type in your, for example, it's a meeting, you can type in your agenda or the things you're going to talk about. Plus, you can actually attach a file okay so if it's a meeting for example and there's a material you want them to read before the meeting you can actually attach that for example so let's attach this pdf okay 
uh, and anyone from your guests uh, will also receive that um, particular document. If it's a Google document as well, you can also do that. Um, but at the end of the creating event, later on, you will see that you'll have to grant them permission to access your Google document. Okay. Now, to the last part of our creating event um, option um, task, um, you have to add your guests. Okay. So, for example, here, I'll be adding my... Um, my other account, okay. Um, my other Gmail account, okay. And you can specify the kind of permission you're going to give them. So it's either modify an event, okay. So if you click that, your participants and guests will have the same um, ability to change, modify your event, change the time, change the date, location, and other details, okay. Um, they may also invite guests and see the guest list, of course. Basically, you're uh, giving them um, control over your event. Okay, so but usually, if I create an event, I usually do not give that permission. I just allow them to invite others if um, they also would like to invite others. But for if, for example, your uh, participants are set and you know already that everyone's on the list, you can also unclick that. Para you, they can't add. Din sila pwedeng mag-add ng iba pang participants. Okay. Um, you can also hide the guest list from them if you want, but uh, I don't think that's necessary for this meeting, okay? So, if that you're done with your details, so your deta your event is set, okay? But what if uh, you'd, you'd like to find out if you have actually a common time with all the participants, okay? So, there's another option that uh, Google Calendar provides you in order to know and find a common time, okay? So, here... Um, beside the event details, okay, there's another option, um, find a time. Okay, so when you click that, okay, it's actually uh, an option to find a common time for the participants. So before you set your meeting uh, and provide specific time, would be nice to know if they are actually available on that time. Okay, so when you click find a time, it will show you, okay, um, when the event is about to be created. Okay, so it's June 18. So it's going to show you the calendar of the persons um, in the guest list, okay, side by side. So here's my other account and here's my another account um, to see if the time that has been set from 9.30 okay, to 10.30 a.m., if both are available on that time. And you can see here that uh, there are no events okay, and both are available on this time. Okay. And um, and now, since you see that they have a common time, you can set actually the meeting there, okay? Now, just a, um, a very important reminder when you are using find a time option, okay? When you do this, um, it only works if the guests and the hosts, okay, which you are, uh, have a shared calendar. So it means that the guests also share their calendars to you, okay? So if it's not, Okay, you won't be able to access their calendar. So, uh, one option here is uh, for you to inform your guests to open their calendars and share your calendars to you, which we're going to do later on how to share your calendars. Okay. Okay. So when you're done, uh, I'm setting all the things. Uh, you know that it they're free and the event details are set. You can click um, save. Okay, and that um, would ask you once you're done. Okay, since you've invited some guests, um, Google Calendar will ask you if you'd like to send them an email okay, to remind them about the meeting or to inform them about the meeting. So, of course, we'd like to send them a, uh, an email. So, send. Okay. Now, your event has been created. Okay, so here, 9.30 um, to 9.30. 9.30 a.m. meeting. Okay, so your first event has been created in your calendar. Okay. Um, so we'll take a short break um, for um, this uh, webinar. Okay, uh, take a short um, CR break or water break. Uh, and we'll continue later uh, with other settings um, with your other calendars, um, subscribing to calendars, um, sharing your calendars, and uh, other functionalities of um, Google 
calendar. Okay, welcome back uh, participants. Um, sana ay nakapagpahinga kayo or nakapag-water break or CR break kayo. Kanina, napag-usapan natin uh, ang paggawa o pag-create ng events sa Google Calendar at il ilang mga iba pang settings. Ngayon naman, tingnan natin kung paano mag-subscribe at i-manage ang inyong mga calendars. Okay, so, pagtimingin tayo sa ating left side panel ng ating Google Calendar, makikita mo ang list of my calendars. So, pag-clinic mo yan, uh, ipapakita nito ang mga events sa loob ng iyong Google Calendar. So, by default, lahat ng events na ginagawa mo uh, ay nilalagay or will be placed sa loob ng iyong personal Google Calendar. Okay? Um, unless specified na ito ay mapupunta sa ibang calendar. Okay? Pansinin din na meron akong dalawang uh, calendars dito na ang title ay Class Sample at Demo Class. At uh, tama ang iniisip mo, yan ay mga calendars sa loob ng aking Google Classroom. Uh, kapag gumawa ka ng Google Class, ay automatic na gumagawa si Google ng Google Calendar para sa class na yun. So lahat ng deadlines mo, events, uh, reminders na nakaplot sa loob ng iyong Google Classroom, ay ipinapasok ni Google sa Google Calendar mo na maaari mong ma-view kasama, kasama ng iba pang mga calendars mo. So, halimbawa, kapag clinic ko ang class sample para makita ko mga events sa loob niyan, ay makikita ko itong mga uh, ulitin natin. Okay. So, makita nyo, uh, pag clinic ko to lumalabas yung mga events, uh, mga assignments na naka-plot sa loob ng Google Classroom na yan. Um, kapag linik ko yung isa ko pang class, lalabas din yung mga tasks or assignments na nakalagay din sa Google Calendar kasama na naka-integrate sa loob ng Google Classroom na yun. At uh, hindi lang yan, um, meron ka mga subscriptions, pwede ka mag-subscribe. So halimbawa dito, nakasubscribe ako sa isa ko pang uh, Google account. Okay? At makikita ko rin ang mga events doon. Okay? Uh, na lahat ng nasa calendar ng account na yun. Okay. So, kapag nag-subscribe kayo sa ibang calendar ng ibang Gmail account, makikita nyo rin ang kanilang um, events. But again, 
uh, it should have permission from the owner of the calendar. Okay, so it depends kung bibigyan ka nila ng permission um, to view their calendars or to add their calendars. We'll do that later uh, kung paano mag-add ng calendar. So unahin muna natin ay paano gumawa ng calendar. So sa left side panel, meron kang add their calendars. I-click lamang ang plus sign para mag-add ng calendars. Okay. So, meron kang iba't ibang mga option how to create or add a calendar. Okay, so, pwede kang mag-subscribe. So, halimbawa, um, gumawa at mag-subscribe tayo sa isang calendar. Okay, so kapag mag-subscribe tayo sa isang calendar, um, kailangan mo lamang ipasok ang isang um, Gmail account. Okay, so, for example, gusto kong i-add ang calendar ng isa ko pang account, which I did already. So, hindi natin um, na ipasa ko na to Pero, yun lang, kailangan mo lang ang kanyang pangalan um, at um, i-add ang calendar na to Okay? Okay? So, dahil naka-add na to uh, ito na yung mga notifications and settings ko para sa calendar na doon. Um, halimbawa, um, I-add ko ang aking calendar sa isa ko pang Gmail account. Okay. Okay, balikan natin. Add calendar. Subscribe to a calendar. Okay. Okay. So, ngayon. Kapag nag add ka ng um, calendars, um, depende yung permission settings. So, limbawa, itong ina ko na calendar ay ang uh, naka-block or naka-private ang kanyang calendar. So, kailangan ko mag-grant, nag-request ng access. So, meron kang tat meron three things na pwede mangyari kapag nag-subscribe ka sa calendar. One, kung open ang kanyang calendar, makakapasok ka, katulad ng nangyari dun sa isa kong account. Uh, two, um, pwede ka mag-request for access. Or three, pwede mong sabihan yung may-ari ng calendar to open or invite you to their calendars. Okay? So, that's one. Okay? Um, pwede ka rin mag-create ng new calendar. Okay? So, for example, um, kagawa ako ng calendar para sa aking department, social science department. Okay? May-ari ka magbigay ng description. Okay? At create calendar. Okay. Ngayon, automatic na yun mamaya, lalabas yun sa left side panel mo, yung uh, newly created calendar, at dun mo na rin siya pwedeng i-reconfigure in terms of settings. So, may, may, gagawin natin yun mamaya uh, para alamin kung paano mag-share ng mga calendars. Okay? So, aside from that, um, pwede ka rin mag-browse ng calendars of interest. Okay? So, kung meron ka bang gustong i-add na, kung nyari gusto natin i-add ang Muslim holidays, okay? So, na-add na sa calendar mo. So, lahat ng Muslim holidays will be plotted into your calendar as well. Or, pwede ka rin mag-browse ka via Google search okay, ng mga openly public um, calendars. Okay. So, halimbawa, um, meron na akong kinuha dito na um, calendar from the website. So, kinopya ko lang kanilang um, okay, uh, website uh, or URL. Okay. So, kapag nakuha mo ang URL na yan, ipasok uh, lamang ang URL. Okay. And add to calendar. Okay. So, makikita natin yan mamaya sa ating um, left side panel. Okay. Maaari mo ring i-import or i-export ang iyong calendar. So, depende. And uh, kapag i-import mo yan, uh, meron ka lang mga codes, uh, embed codes, and uh, URL codes na nakakopyahin. Kapag, kapag naman export, i-download mo ang iyong calendar. So, ngayon, dahil nakapag-add na tayo, makita natin yan sa ating left side panel. So, pansinin, um, ang newly created um uh, calendar natin, Social Science uh, Department Calendar. Okay? Um, at nag-subscribe din tayo sa Muslim Holidays uh, Calendar and Philippine Holidays in Calendar. Although, by default, um, si, calendar, uh, si Google Calendar ay isinasama na ang holidays ng 
uh, iyong country by location. So, dahil nadidetect naman ni Google kung ang, ang iyong location, uh, isinasaman niya to sa iyong list of calendars. So, for example, uh, meron ka rin dyan. Although, sa holidays in the Philippines, um, mas general. Okay? Yung kasing sa Philippine holidays, meron yung mas specific example, uh, meron kang Philippines in Manila Day, I think. Okay? And of course, yung Philippine Independence. Okay? So ngayon, nakapag-add ka na ng mga calendars. Okay? And again, pwede mong itagal yan, mga calendars mo. Which ones do you want to see? For example, para lang ma-organize. Okay? I don't want to see other calendars. I only want to see my, my own calendar. Okay? Or my personal calendar. So, you can do that. Um, and then again, you can toggle which ones you would like to see in your calendar. Okay. Now, um, pa sharing your calendar, okay, um, is also as easy to do, okay. So what you only need to do is to click on a particular calendar, okay. So you have a um, option here, okay. So in a calendar, okay, you see these options for uh, this calendar, okay. You can change the color if you want, okay. So you can change into um, different colors depending on how you want to um, tag in terms of color or color tag your calendar. Um, for the settings and sharing, so let's click on the settings and sharing. Okay. Now, so you can change the name. Okay. Um, you can put description. Okay. On your calendar. Okay. Um, you can export. Okay. It, it will download your calendar. You can make it public. Okay. But I don't really suggest that because it will give access to everyone um, into your um, calendar, okay? You can also get shareable link uh, in order to share your calendar to others. Um, so that's one way of sharing your calendar, okay? Or to be more specific, you can simply um, add people to your calendar, okay? So you can click that, okay? And for example, I'd like to, um, okay, invite uh, my other account. Okay, and then send. Okay, and you can before you send, uh, you can specify the permission. Um, so if they, you want them to see all the details, make changes to events, etc., uh, you can specify that to them. Okay, before you send, so that uh, although you can still see and change the permission settings later on, even if you send the, the invitation already. Okay. Um, you can also um, specify. Um, the notifications we've set that already earlier. Okay. Um, other notifications for new events, um, change events, cancelled events. Uh, you can also set them. Um, you can also integrate your calendar to uh, different um, formats. Okay, or embed them into a website. Just copy the embed uh, code. Okay. Um, and you can also transfer it to other formats like the iCal format. Okay. And of course, um, at the bottom, okay, you can um, delete or remove the calendar. Although uh, that's also doable um, easily uh, outside of the settings. Okay, so if you want to delete a um, calendar, you simply click the X, unsubscribe from class sample or something like that. It will remove your calendar already. Okay. Okay. So that's your. Um, ways to share your calendar okay so but, but again just be make be careful on sharing your calendars because it would uh, make sure that you have properly set the settings uh, for permission for google calendars created via google classroom um, please be take note that all your calendars are automatically shared to all your students enrolled into your google classroom okay now another um integration um, between Google um, tools is that here on the right side panel you can see Google Tasks. Okay? If you click on that, um, it creates a um, uh, events also into your Google Calendar, and Google Calendar can also create tasks okay, into your My Tasks. Okay? So, for example, if you create a event like um, jog, okay, so your task is to jog, okay. Uh, notice that if you create that, nothing will happen to your Google Calendar unless you specify a particular time. For example, I'll be jogging on um, June 13. Okay, I can set the time for that. 
okay uh, around 5 a.m. okay and you can um, when you create that it will also appear into your calendar see there okay um, here okay 5 a.m. job okay um, you can edit that okay and make that a repeating task which also be a repeating event or task within your Google Calendar um, same way if you create a task okay example let's create here okay a task okay um, read okay so for example there's a reading assignment you'd like to assign to uh, to yourself okay um, it will also ask you if you'd like to uh, it will be put into your my task if you save that okay it will also generate a my task okay so that also uh, allows you to um, be more organized in terms of your tasks, etc. Okay? So, isa pa sa pwede natin gawin upang ma-maximize ang gamit ng Google, Google Calendar ay mag-add ng mga extensions. Okay? So, right now, I have uh, two extensions I added to my Google Calendar. One is what they call Checker Plus. Okay? So, when you click on that extension, uh, it will easily uh, or easy view or access to your Google Calendar regardless where uh, where wherever tab you are okay so for example if I create another tab here I would still have access to that calendar okay if I create another tab I will still have uh, access to that um, calendar okay um, uh, also I also another, I have another extension called um, Team Cal, okay. So basically, what uh, Team Cal does is it collates your uh, calendars into a horizontal format, okay. So something like this. So just add your calendar and uh, the calendar of your other guests, so that you could compare their schedules on a horizontal format. Okay? Therefore, making it much more easier to view and schedule meetings with them, okay. So there are more um, uh, extensions you can explore. Just uh, go to Chrome Web Store, and um, it will give you all the possible extensions that you can use for your Google Calendar. Okay. So I hope that uh, nakatulong at uh, nabigyan lino natin ang paggamit or the use of Google Calendar. I hope that you will be able to use Google Calendar into your classes and integrate it. Um, during this um, online distance learning shift. Maraming salamat at kung meron kayong questions or katanungan, uh, mag-email lamang uh, upang mabigyan namin kayo ng uh, tulong at kasagutan. Maraming salamat muli.